All right, so we've got a basic game working. Let's start keeping track of the score. So we're going to make a really basic HUD object, uh, heads up display, where all it does is uh, show you the score, basically. Um, so we need to create a new class. And certainly there are ways to do this without creating a class. But frankly, I think it's worthwhile to create even simple classes when you first start object-oriented programming, just to see how they kind of interact. So um, public uh, class HUD. Oh yeah, and we need one field. So what does a HUD need to know? Can you guess? It needs to know the score. Private int score. Public HUD. This is the constructor method constructor and as we do many times in the constructor we're just going to call it init and we have to create init public void init and in init we're just going to set the score to zero and then the HUD needs to know how to draw itself. Public void draw with the graphics 2D tool from the main game panel class. And we have to, of course, import graphics 2D just so that the class HUD actually has access to the information in graphics 2D. And we want a G dot set color, color dot just so you can see it easily red I'll do and g dot draw string score colon space plus score and we're gonna set this to 20 and 20 that's the x and the y coordinate uh, and then we need to say public because the game panel class needs to get access to this but it's a private Int score so it can get direct access, right? So it's, it needs a way to get it. It's going to return an int. The game panel class needs to ask the HUD, hey, what's the score? And it uses this method called, we can just say what's the score, or let's say get score, that's more common. Get score. And get score should just return, you guessed it, the score. So now if we head over to the game panel, let's add a game, uh, the HUD object. So in the same place as we had all the entities, just to keep it easy and clear, HUD, the HUD. Scroll down to where we're initializing all these objects. Underneath map, the HUD equals new HUD. Now, when do we want to increment the score? Well, you can choose to do this however you want. I'm just going to do it whenever somebody hits a brick. So, like, if the ball intersects a brick... We're going to set the map to so that the brick is gone. We're going to set the ball to deep, change the direction of the ball, and we're going to increment the score. The HUD dot. Oh, I forgot this dot add score. I forgot that method. Um, and we're just going to add 50 to it every time. So I got to go over and create the add score method in HUD. And we'll just do that right underneath get score. So public void, because you're telling it to do something, add score. And what does it need to add? Well, you got to tell it what to add. So uh, new score, or like score to add. Let's do that score to add. And then score equals, score plus equals. You can just combine them. Uh, this value of score should be uh, incremented or like the the amount in score to add should be added to the value that is currently in score that's all plus equals means so it's just a shorter way of typing score equals score plus score to add we can use it that way if you if that's more clear okay and then we need to go over to the game panel and we need to draw the HUD after we're drawing everything else update and down underneath here after we draw the map we'll draw the HUD the HUD dot draw and let's see if this is ordered correctly I think I want the map to be drawn first I'm not sure that matters but 
I think it might explain a little bit of the weird behavior. Okay, let's run it and see if we can keep track of scores. <laughs> Why was that frozen right then? Okay, so you see the score is going up. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see it is. Uh, there, 400, 450, I'm so good at this. Uh, and also the bricks are a little weird. It shouldn't be, the bricks shouldn't be that small. So we need to create a map with smaller bricks. Which, again, because we have this constructor that allows us to send in how many bricks we would like per map, allows us to create lots of different maps very quickly. So let's create one that's just 10. And let's do six, six rows and 10 columns and see what that looks like. Um, yeah, that's a little bit better little bit more kind of sensible number of bricks you can choose to do with whatever you want obviously let's see if we can get it in the middle I uh, can't get it in the middle yet okay um, so that's working uh, great that's all for this video